the next theorem we're going to look at is something we've already talked a little bit about. As a matter of fact, I might already have stated this as a mathematical fact. It's basically saying that if you have a continuous function where the domain is a closed and bounded interval, then the image, or f of the domain, the image of the function is going to be a closed and bounded uh, interval as well. Just a very, very simple example would be if this is a and this is b, and the function is defined on from a to b, and we take something like this as being the function. So this is f of a, and this is f of b, not that that matters in this problem, <clears throat> but f a to b being a closed bounded interval, what is the image of this function if this is f? Well, all you need to do is go to the bottom point, the lowest point, and not f of b necessarily, but the highest point of the graph, and the image of the graph or in other words since a b is the domain plugging in all of the values would give you the image of f so the image of a to b or the image of f is the closed interval to from whatever f of a is on this graph to whatever this is Maybe C, maybe F of C. Closed bounded, closed and bounded. So now let's prove that. <clears throat> well, based upon things we've already proven, it's going to be very, very simple. So the statement of the theorem is as follows. If F from the closed interval A to B into R is continuous, then there exists two numbers in the real line, on the real line, C and D, such that f of a, b, and remember what that is? This is the image of f. Another way of saying it. Is going to be equal to this closed and bounded interval. Well, let's start the proof. Since a, b is a closed and bounded interval, it's compact. <clears throat> Since f is continuous, those two things imply that there are two numbers, x1 and x2, somewhere in between a and b. It could be a and b. Either one of them could be. Such that f of x, for all values of x between a and b, fall between f of x1 and f of x2. This is the minimum height on the graph. This is the maximum height on the graph. For all x's in the a and b. And that's my corollary 3.11. I think that just said that under this hypothesis, a compact set, a continuous function, f will attain its minimum and maximum values. <clears throat> okay, well, let's let c be the max value. I guess c would be the min value, the height of the function at x1. d will be the height of the function or value of the function at x2. So again, the minimum height of the function, the maximum height of the function. Let's let y be any element in CB. Think of that as being the height of a function. We have to show that there's an x that gives us this value. Since y was chosen arbitrarily here, it would be true for all the values in between C and D, and therefore the theorem would hold true. By theorem 3.16, that's the intermediate value theorem, there exists an x in between a and b that could be a or b, so it's in the closed interval, a to b, where f of x is equal to y. That's essentially the end of the proof. We arbitrarily chose a number 
between C and D. C and D are already, are already covered. F, F of X1 is C, F of X2 is D. If Y is any number in between, well, we found an X such that F of X is equal to that height Y. So all of the heights would be covered in between C and D. So I can finish this off by, therefore, F of AB, the image of F is equal to the closed bounded interval from C to D. And next we'll do a couple of examples.